One third of the Arctic Circle is made up of land, the rest is ocean. Most of this region remains poorly explored, but the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, estimates that the Arctic region contains an enormous amount of oil and gas, perhaps even 20% of the world's resources. The main areas where exploratory activities have already taken place are those on land, mainly in Russia and the United States, Alaska. The USGS has estimated that the resources, not the reserves, the estimated resources of conventional oil, natural gas and natural gas liquids, let's say hydrocarbons in general, in this area, the Arctic Circle, would amount to the equivalent of about 400 billion barrels of oil. Around 87% of these resources would be concentrated in seven of the Arctic Basin states. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Which countries are authorized to explore here? Eight countries have territory that lies within the Arctic Circle. Canada, Denmark, through Greenland, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden and the United States. The coastlines of Finland and Sweden do not border the Arctic Ocean. Therefore, they do not have jurisdiction over any part of the Arctic seabed. The other six countries do. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea provides each of these countries with an exclusive economic zone that extends for about 200 miles from its coast. However, as you can imagine, defining these areas with precision has given rise to numerous territorial disputes. The countries go to great lengths to win access to potentially hydrocarbon-rich areas. That said, Oil exploration in a place like this is a huge challenge even for world superpowers like Russia and the United States of America. Why? Because besides being cold, the Arctic is also dark, remote, dangerous and an obscenely expensive place to explore. The extremely high cost of exploration and production activities can only be sustained if the revenue generated is equally high. By equally high, I actually mean higher, as clearly the balance sheet must have a positive bottom line. In order to generate large revenues, operating companies obviously target large deposits, those that are capable of producing a significant amount of oil and or gas. Small deposits, in fact, are often not even taken into consideration because they would inevitably be loss-making ventures. At this point, you may be wondering why Arctic exploration is so expensive. I mean, what are the practical concrete reasons? There are certainly many reasons. I have identified six or seven of them. Certainly the climate. As the climate is harsh and wintry, it means that the equipment has to be specially designed to withstand the cold temperatures. Two, in the Arctic, poor ground conditions may necessitate additional site preparation to prevent equipment and structures from sinking. As you can see, these are practical problems. The marshy Arctic tundra can even hinder exploration activities during the warmer months of the year. Furthermore, in the Arctic seas, the pack ice can damage offshore structures and hinder the transportation of personnel, materials and equipment for long periods of time. Then we also have to consider that the world's production center's long supply lines mean that an excess of equipment and a larger inventory of spare parts are needed to ensure reliability. And then the limited access to transportation and the long supply lines for refueling, these factors reduce transportation options and obviously increase costs. Then salaries and wages, let's be clear, obviously they must be higher. This is necessary to induce staff to work in the Arctic, which is isolated and inhospitable. Would you go and work in the Arctic? No? If anyone watching works on an oil rig, give us a call. So we can interview you and you can tell us a bit about life on an oil rig. These difficulties make the cost of exploration and oil production in the Arctic almost double that of other areas. However, the quantity of oil and gas resources is so large that it has attracted several operating companies in recent years, let's say recent decades. 
On the other hand, though, the world is fortunately starting to go in a different direction, and by that I mean it is starting to move away from the use of fossil fuels. Environmental groups have strongly criticized plans to explore the Arctic as being inconsistent with commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It must also be said that there is growing political to pressure to limit oil and gas mining. In short, it is a highly sensitive issue, and the decision to invest heavily in exploring for hydrocarbons in the Arctic may not be, for lack of a better way of putting it, a move that is in line with the times. So, what we could say is that investing elsewhere in greener solutions would be a wiser choice. In any case, in my opinion, there's a big difference between saying and doing. We'll see, guys. So, goodbye from me, and thank you. See you in the next video, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Ciao, belly!